everybody. How's it going today? Um, just having a kind of a casual Sunday. And thought I'd mess around and set up a custom terrain in K-Stars so that I have a better idea of my actual sky view with my obstructions in it. And so anyway, I thought I would walk you through that process. I'll make this a quick video today. And uh, hopefully you find this helpful. And let me know if you have any questions. I am going to skim over some stuff, such as actually getting the 360 view of the uh, uh, of your um, telescope area and your sky view with obstructions. So I won't be going into that. I'll just show you the one that I made. It was simple. I'll talk about it just a little bit, but uh, I'm not actually going to go through the process of creating that. So anyway, hopefully you will enjoy this video, and uh, I really appreciate you stopping by. My name is Doug, and this is Astro AF. All right, so over here in K-Stars, uh, the first thing that you want to do is to load your custom terrain image and you would have already created this. I'll pull mine up and then I can explain it just a little bit. And that you can find in K-Star settings. And then you'll uh, tell it to show terrain. And then you will navigate to the PNG image that you created for uh, your terrain background. And then click apply. And OK. And as you can see, I've got my custom terrain image here, which has my house. And I can scroll around and I've got my trees. These are all my obstructions. And, you know, basically all the way around. And what I did here is I, you can see my seam here, doesn't really matter. Um, because we're just trying to get close. And then coming back up on the roof lines again as we come over the top. And then right here, I know that this is north, going straight up to Polaris right up here. And, um, and so this is the north point on my house. And uh, so what I wanted to do was to get that aligned with the um, um, with this image aligned with the north point, so before I go into that, the um, I set up a tripod in my backyard, and I just used my iPhone, and I leveled the tripod, and I leveled the uh, the head on the tripod, and then I did the two panoramic images, and. Um, I started, I can't remember exactly where I started. I, uh, I think I started at kind of the center of, of, or the corner of my, of my home here. And then I went around and on the iPhone, it only does 270 degrees, which is a bummer. And I can't find a good, uh, pano application for iPhone that, um, will do 360 degrees. And also the, the Google street view app that you used to be able to use to create a 360 spherical image, which would have been perfect for this because then I could have taken the entire spherical image and edited the sky out of it and, uh, and, and put that in here. Uh, that would have been easy. Um, but instead I had to stitch together two panels. So I did two 270 degree panoramic images and then I stitched those together. I actually stitched them in Lightroom. It has an automatic image stitcher and it did a pretty decent job of it. So here's my panel, and uh, this is uh, what was stitched together in Lightroom. After I stitched it together, and Lightroom made a 360 of it for me, um, I was able to then import that into here. So with that, uh, I then wanted to verify my alignment of the image, and uh, you can do that in the K-Stars. Let me see if I remember where that is. Um, oh, it's, it's in the K-Stars uh, settings, or configure K-Stars, terrain. And then since I've added my image, then I can set offsets for my 
uh, azimuth and altitude here in order to get it lined up. But the question that I had was, well, how do I know if it's aligned or not? So what I did is I created um, some points on the map. I just did a couple um, because I really wasn't feeling like this had to be exact. I just wanted it to be pretty close and I can maybe uh, dial it in if I, if I see that it's, it's off too far in some areas or something. But um, so what I did was I just, uh, this is an image here on, on the right of the top of my roof and uh, at the north position. So I, I knew that that was where that altitude line was, um, which is basically right in this area down here. Let me, so anyway, let's see. So here, this is where my mount is currently pointing. And when I looked at that image, we can see that it's right at my roof line. And so what I wanted to do was make sure I gave it a little bit of room. So I made a, um, I, I offset this so the roof line was actually below and that makes sure that my chimney and, and flue stacks and stuff like that are out of the way. And I created this flag right here as a point. So then I uh, went over and found the highest place here, which is this tree. And um, I set a point right above that. Um, and I basically just took my uh, telescope and pointed it down in here in the tree. And I worked my way up until I found the top of the tree. And then I set this point a little bit higher. And then what I did following that was uh, there's an option in here and it's in settings for artificial horizon. And as you can see, I plotted a bunch of points around my sky that were just outside of all of my obstructed view. All right, so, um, and then when I was, oops, when I was done, and my last one, I made sure and reconnect to this point here. So I've got a solid boundary all the way around. And the way that that is done is you simply click on select points from the sky map. And then I can go around and I'm not gonna click here, but each one of these points I clicked and then it adds in the azimuth and altitude automatically from where I click on, okay? And that creates this boundary line here for obstructions. And when I'm done, I turn that off and I click apply. Uh, my backyard is what I named this region. This is saved in a SQLite database, by the way, um, in the uh, application support directory and library for KSTARS. I did look at that table because um, I was hoping to actually go out with an app that uh, would gather uh, Alton as um, uh, uh, values by uh, pointing the camera and using GPS and stuff. Uh, however, the format was different and this, uh, what I did here actually, it only took me like, like 15, 20 minutes and, and I had this in. So uh, once, once I had all my points plotted around my sky map, uh, I just clicked on apply and close. Oh, I need to select. So that little checkbox right there. So I gotta select that so that it's active. And then apply. Why? I don't know why that's disappearing. Oh no, it's, it's cool. And then uh, close. And then as you might be able to see, there is a red outline going around here now. And that outline is my boundary area. And at this point, I can turn off my custom uh, background because I don't need it anymore. So I can, and th that'll help performance too because it doesn't have to render that as I'm moving around the sky map. So now, as you can see, I've got this red area here, which is actually, you know, if we look at it, this is my view of the sky from my backyard. And these are all the obstructions. And now what I can do, if I go into the 
Ecos scheduler. It's already selected here, but you can select artificial horizon. And now that becomes a constraint for your scheduling uh, of your sequences that to ensure that the schedule that you've planned ahead um, doesn't have in obstructions in the way and it'll automatically update the, uh, that, you know, and start the job based on that constraint for the artificial horizon. So now when I create a, a, a new sequence and schedule it, uh, it will ensure that my objects are not behind any obstructions that I've defined for my custom terrain. So anyway, that's pretty cool. And that's, that's really it for this video. And if you have any questions, you know, certainly uh, let me know in the comments. It's pretty simple, quick video. But, you know, the idea is to actually map out your, your real physical obstructions so that you have an actual sky map view for where you're at. And you can create multiple regions. So if you are um, shooting from, maybe you're on vacation and uh, you want to do a, uh, like the, the image, you might spend like, like 30 or 40 minutes on creating the image. If you have a 3D camera, then you're probably gonna spend about like 10 minutes creating the image and then you need to edit the sky out of it in Photoshop uh, another 10 minutes. So, you know, uh, in 30 minutes, you can have your um, terrain image that you can then use to, uh, to plot your horizon like this. So anyway, uh, might be something that is useful for you if you're on vacation or you wanna know what's going on in your own backyard and uh, um, however you'd like to use it. So anyway, I thought that was pretty fun and I wanted to uh, share that with you. It's just something I was messing around with here on a Sunday. Obviously, I'm, I'm doing this during the daytime, so be careful. Know where the sun is when you're moving your scope around, uh, getting some calibration images for your, uh, your terrain in your backyard. And anyway, have a good time with it, and I hope that you enjoy your Sunday as well. So thank you so much for stopping by. If you like this video, please leave a like below, and also subscribe would be awesome. So thank you very much. Take care.